Hi, welcome to the Mentor to Engineer. In our last video, we were looking at the effects of a side load on our pin. This episode, we're going to take those forces and we're going to calculate them in MathCAD. So let's go to MathCAD. Uh, so here I've added in a uh, section here that says uh, we're going to look at the side load force. And uh, first thing we probably want to learn is what is that side load force? And we said that was going to be 100 pounds. And let's specify some other things. Let's make sure that our length is still the right length. And it's nice just to repeat it there to, to have it. Yep, it's uh, about five and a half feet. All right, we're also going to specify the width of our clevises. And I'm going to use a um, quarter inch for each of these. And we're going to make W1 and W3 the same. And then we're going to have W2, which is equal to 1.5 inches. And our center to center, I'm going to make that 2 inches. All right, now let's also calculate our gap. Since we're going to be pushing uh, everything up and minimizing gap 2, we'll just assume it's 0. Uh, so that's going to be the center to center distance minus W2 minus W1 over 2 minus W3 over, whoops, what did I do there? Ah, uh, minus W3 over two. All right, so this will probably be around, uh, I don't know, eighth of an inch, quarter inch. Quarter inch, okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is calculate our moment from the side load, and that's gonna be our force of the side load times length times the cosine of the angle which for this case we've specified to be zero. And we're gonna calculate our moment here. And that's 550 inch pounds. Okay, uh, we're also gonna calculate the force of the side load, which is moment of the side load divided by the center to center distance. Drag this down so it's not over top of it. All right, 2675. All right, let's just see, compared to this table that we calculated with the R pin value, how they stack up. All right, so here we got 1819. All right, so let's just specify that uh, that is our force. We kn I know it's not in the same angle, you know, because we're combining two perpendicular forces, uh, but it's the highest load we have, and we'll just see how, uh, if we need to refine it further. If we come up with a, a Pinless a decent size, made out of a decent strength material. Uh, we'll just let it slide. And most of the time, uh, you can do this without having to get too technical. Uh, but just notice that this is going to be overly conservative. So that force is 1819 pounds force. All right. So let's look at our moments. Uh, from the uh, force of the side load, and we said that was going to be equal to with 1 over 2 plus our gap 1. Now we're going to add the second component. This is the area from uh, the triangle. Uh, it's going to be with, sorry, we're going to divide that by 2. And then we're going to multiply that by with 2 divided by two, and that's the area under that triangle because we're using half, uh, essentially half the force and half the, the width of the center moment, or center beam. And that is gonna equal uh, 2,000 inch pounds. All right, we also need to find the uh, reaction from uh, the pin forces, which we just calculated there. And that is going to be equal to uh, the re reaction of the pin times uh, the center to center distance. And we're going to treat it as a simply supported beam. So that uh, makes the moment uh, one fourth of that. And we get another inch, uh, another moment here. I just cannot type. All right, so that's 909. So that's about a third, not quite a third, uh, maybe 2.5 times 
Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, calculate the pin. So I think uh, if we start off with a three quarter inch pin, that might get us there. Let's calculate the area of it. So that's uh, pi over four times the diameter squared. All right, and then we're going to calculate the uh, section modulus of that pin, and that's going to be pi over 16 times d to the third. And that's a pretty small number there, so we're going to uh, we're going to have uh, have to see what it, where it takes us. Okay, now we're going to calculate the, shear, the normal stress and then the shear stress. Uh, so the normal stress is going to be equal to uh, the reaction moment plus the side load. All right, and that's going to divide, be divided by S. All right, look at that, 3,500 PSI, or 35,000 PSI. Okay, now we're going to find our shear stress here. And our shear stress is going to be reaction of the pin divided by, all right, because half of it's going to go one way and half of it's going to go the other, uh, plus the uh, force of the side load. Actually, we can. Uh, Put that on top of there, so it'll end up being the same, same denominator. Okay. All right. Uh, now we got to combine the shear and normal. So let's go up here because I remember that we combined them earlier. So we're going to just copy this. Since I like to use all the same terms, it should just be a drop-in replacement here. Uh, just align a little bit there. Uh, we got a design factor of 1.39, and we are, let's see what, what strength of material we're using. I like to use 100 KSI. Uh, material for pins, uh, pre-chromed uh, uh, rod there. Uh, you can get it in a bunch of different shapes and sizes already with chrome on it, so you know you get a nice hard surface for your bearing to wear on. Plus, with the 100 KSI material, you can actually get it hardened up to, uh, sometimes up to 130 KSI. Uh, so we got a 2.78, so that's not quite where I want to be. Uh, so let's look at the next step up would be a one inch pin. And look at that, wow, 6.5. Um, we could actually go down, there's a 1045 material that's, that's uh, chrome plated and I believe that's 75, maybe 77. And look, that still gives us a five. We could probably even drop it down to 50 KSI. Look at that, 3.25. So that's about as low as we want. Uh, personally, um, you know, three design vector is, is great. I would, I'd like to keep all my pins out of the same material. That way, uh, if I have an application in the future, uh, hopefully I can react, reuse pins because they're all 100 KSI pins. Uh, rather than having to worry about, uh, you know, is this pin strong enough? Oh, it's, it's the perfect pin, but it's, you know, it's just not strong enough. Uh, so I use all of them out of 100K. All right, well, thank you for watching. In uh, our next video, we're going to look at the bearing area stresses on the clevises. So we make sure that we have those clevises uh, properly sized for the loads that they are going to see. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.